So I went to Cal State Long Beach, thought I was going to play football. Wasn't that good. <laughs> Realized you were just a high school star. So I started working, uh, doing some little, uh, I was working at Big D Ranch Market. When I became 19 years of age, uh, I applied for a police officer position for the city of Compton. They were like, oh, no, you good and all of that, and you look like a good candidate, but we're going to put you in the jail for a couple of years. We want you to finish your degree. I think it was my daddy stopped it. But, so I, I went to start working in the jail, and I worked the jail until I was like 21, 22, and then I became a police officer. got a badge, now it's a little heavy. And I do think I, I went through too much power at the age of 21, 22 years of age. I only think a person should become a police officer now to at least 26, 28 years of age. So I think I was walking a little tougher than what I should have been walking. But you had a father that had already went through it. Wasn't he giving you advice He about was, that? he was trying. Uh, he was trying, trying his damnedest. But he was always considered a social worker. And I was always like, I ain't you. I ain't like you. Let's catch some robbers. Now nah, they laughing at us. They call us elf troops. So you wanted everybody in jail? I didn't want everybody in jail. I just wanted to show them that I can get them. It took me about three to four years within my job to learn that everybody ain't assholes. All these people that's out here doing uh, certain type of crimes and stuff, it ain't like they want to be doing these, these particular crimes. You know, that, that a little discretion, a little talking to to some people works. Not all niggas, because most niggas don't give a fuck and you know, tell you to kick rocks. But if you just talk to some people, you can start down here and then escalate your way up. You don't have to come into a situation already up here. Because where else do you have to go? I came on pre-Rodney King and you was trained. At the end of a pursuit, motherfucker, you make a, a motherfucker make you chase him all over the city, you get his ass whooped after the end of the pursuit. With the Rodney King beating, was that actually an extreme case or was that, yeah. what you call that typical? I that mean, was 55 you, blows or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I ain't never seen nobody use a baton like that. Put it this way, I ain't never learned how to use a baton like those white boys was using. I, I may give you one or two good jabs. Well, I would have got tired swinging that, but and I was in good shape, you know. I, you know, I wasn't fat like I am now back then, but I don't think I knew how to work a baton like that. The judge said, after the 48th or the 47th blow, after that, every blow was inappropriate. <laughs> so then eventually you're dealing with people that you went to elementary school with. Yeah, you know, and a lot of the, the Crips, and the other guys gonna get mad. But well, I'm gonna be honest, they didn't put me in my district too often where I grew up at. I didn't work that side of district two. I barely, that was called district two in Compton. It's four districts? Yes, yeah, four districts. And so I very rarely went into district two. Uh, but guys in, in other districts, three and four, <laughs> they did catch you all. <laughs> Cause okay. I was an active cop. Why did KPD write in his book that the rights were just bad cops? Uh, I actually think he used it. He took it even further than bad cops, right? He might say dirty. I don't know, but when you're in, when you're in crooks, crooks ass, <laughs> niggas ass, they consider you bad because you know when you're a jacker and in them. But like I asked him, I got a tape recording where I played on bomb first. I said, Keefe, have I ever stole from you, assaulted you, or or took any money from you? I said, no, no, I ain't never said that. I said, well, then, how am I dirty? How was I dirty? He's like, oh, I wasn't talking about you. I wasn't talking about I'm like, no, you said the rights. And he was like, well, no, no. Y'all just was always in my ass. You know, after, after, uh, after the shooting went down, y'all went and disarmed us. Your daddy raided my house and my spots and took the guns from us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what the police supposed to do. So nobody to get shot. So he, he taken it like because they went and raided their spots and took all of their guns and he don't know what happened in the mob area, then we were playing favoritism or size or something. 
neck bone. Biggest fight of my career was with him. He was coming this way, I was coming that way. And I was like, what up, Nick? What's up? And, and at this time, I knew he was working for Death Row, but I wasn't really working for Death Row that often. I was doing like spots, so, and the video shoots and stuff like that. And Nick was like, oh, what up, little Red? And so you could look at him and tell he was dirty. I'm like, what the fuck going on? So I get out of the car. I get out of the car, Nick. He gets out of the car. So I go to pat him down. And immediately, he took off the car and swung. So he's trying to get away now. He ain't trying to hit me. He's trying to get away. But you know, I have a good police tactics then. And um, I was on him. And uh, later on found out he had a bunch of cocaine in his pocket. I wish it would have went a different way. So you ended up uh, arresting him for cocaine possession? Yeah. And resisting arrest. And, and what was the outcome of that case? I think he got like a year and a half, 18 months. So how, now you have a lot of people that are cool with him. They know, oh, wow, you just arrested the homie. How did they react to you? They, you know, they knew that was my job. It wasn't like I planted it on him or anything like that. That's the one thing about street dudes. They just want to be treated fairly and righteous. It's the geeks and the other motherfuckers that be thinking, oh, fuck the police and hate, hate the cops and all of that. They don't look at it that way. They just like, don't be messing over me, getting out, hitting on me and doing this or abusing me, kicking my feet, making me put my, your hands on the hood of the car and all of that. Talk to me like a man. And if I'm dirty when you come, then I deal with it. Don't be lying on me. Don't plant no shit on me. And don't disrespect me. You don't do none of those three things, you're going you to be all right. Me and him end up being cool, you know, started working, taking trips together, working with Shug, but working for Shug. Um, How many years before did that neck bone interaction happen? I came and he was getting out of the pen from my case. So... I think the interaction happened in 94. I started working with Death Row in 94. What caused you to end it at 11 years? Yeah, I had a traffic accident. I had a traffic accident actually off duty. I bought a Corvette, 1994 Corvette. And I messed up my ankle, had a traffic accident. But they messed up. They allowed me to come back to work. Came back to work about a year, year and a half later. Um, I was chasing some dudes, just did a drive-by, and blew through an intersection, and got T-bone hit on the side, and I slammed my foot on the brakes, because I seen, you know, seen the car coming. Ankle snaps again, swell up like that. Didn't think I was going to be able to walk again for a while. Still today, walk with a limp. I have what they call vascular necrosis. I have no cartilage in my right ankle. I just had bone rubbing against bone. Plus, I was already getting it going on with Death Row and, and was doing a little bit of work there, moonlighting and all of that, and was, you know, reaping the benefits of, of, of that as well. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Like and comment below to give us your feedback, and be sure to watch the two related videos to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and listen to our weekly podcast, The Gangster Chronicles, every Thursday. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.